You know, uh, because how many of us know when you're when you're among the Lord, things happen. Amen. Because where God says where He is, so is His power, and I have to be where His power is. Amen. I I don't want to be nowhere else because everywhere else I'm powerless. Hello. Can I tell you that day is a good day because this is what the Lord has made. Amen. And as Junior had said earlier, today is Palm Sunday, and I know there's a lot of sermons out there that are traditional, but y'all know me, I am not traditional by no means. And as I was getting things together, I said, Lord, <laughs> this ain't making much sense. <laughs> and how many of us know it don't have to make sense to us whenever you're obedient with God, it happens, Amen. And so uh, as I was studying along there, and, and uh, I, was, <laughs> I was going down these rabbit trails. How many of y'all, when you get to read the Word, you start these rabbit trails, and they just start opening up all kinds of things. The next thing you know, you're like, oh, man, how did I wind up over here? <laughs> but you know what? God is good. Amen. This morning, I, I, I do want us to recognize that uh, there, there was a time in, in the Scripture whenever Jesus uh, Asked his disciples, well, he didn't ask me, told them to go and get him a colt down the road there and bring him up, and, uh, and he was going to ride him into the city. And then all of a sudden, all these people around Jesus and all around, they heard that he was coming. The Messiah was coming. So they, they created this atmosphere of praise. They were all so happy to want to see Jesus coming in to the city. They had expectations of what Jesus was going to do. They, they, see, they, they went ahead and they had these presumption ideas of what Jesus was going to do, but Jesus already had his own agenda, amen? And thank God he don't listen to our agendas, <laughs> Right? And so all of a sudden, they, they got these uh, folks that are putting down palm leaves and, and having Jesus come entering into the city, and they were all singing with praise, Hosanna to the king, Hosanna to the king. You know, I would have loved to have been there to hear that, amen? But I'd love to know more than ever that I'm going to be in heaven one day, hallelujah, and I'm going to be singing around that throne. I, I don't know what I'm going to be singing, but hallelujah, I'm going to be singing, amen. What a day that will be <laughs> when my Jesus I shall see, amen. Whenever I know that I'm around the throne of God and I got no worries, no fears, no nothing except but to praise and worship the almighty God. What a day that's going to be. No more heartaches, no more fears, no more failures, no more anxiety attacks, no more destructions, no more shootings, hello, no more addictions, hello. What a day that's going to be. And whenever Jesus was coming into the city, all those folks, that's what they saw. They saw hope coming into a city that's going to be a king among kings. He's going to deliver Everything the way they want it delivered. That's the reason that Jesus came into this world the way he did. Into a lonely manger. Into a stinking old barn. Hello? I was telling Brother Danny the other day, to this morning here, he asked me for how I enjoyed bringing our Shannon over to the barn to see the horses. And I said, it was great until I went in that barn. Hello? I smelt that barn for two days. And you talk about some messed up sinuses. My head was just everywhere. And Brother Danny says, you're allergic to them? I said, I guess I am. I had no idea I was. <laughs> but can you just imagine the atmosphere of the people that were so excited to see Jesus coming into a city to proclaim his kingdom. And then when he got there, Oh, how the times change. Hmm. They went from one moment to singing, Hosanna, the King of Kings. Our Savior is coming to the point of hollering, Crucify! 
crucified. Oh, how we have good intentions and how they get us so much in trouble. Amen. That's what the word was brought to me about this week was about good intentions. We have good intentions of changing the trash. Amen, man. Come on. You walk by that trash can and you see it overflow and you go, I think they might get a few more things in there. But I'm going to change that. I got the intentions, good intentions to want to change that trash before it overflows into the floor. But we're willing to go that extra mile to see how many it takes for it to start to flow over into the floor, don't we? Come on now. Come on. As when we were kids, we would want to clean our rooms. Mm. Good intentions, right? Mm. Or maybe we'd say, you know what? I'm going to read my word every day. I'm going to get in that word and I'm going to read that word every day. Good intentions. But then a movie comes on. Then your phone rings. Or the kids start yelling. Or something comes along the way. That causes us to go, well, I guess not tonight. I'll do it. I'll start tomorrow. I'll start it tomorrow. It's funny how we can prioritize things for something else versus through the word of God. How we can prioritize to do things for other people, but when it comes to the Lord, it's like, well, God, I had good intentions of doing that. <laughs> I, I, I planned on being at church, but you know, the fish were biting. G's going like, why are you looking at me? <laughs> or, you know, I, I got, okay, yep, I'm going to do it, you know me. I got family in town, so I can't, uh, what? Good intentions. How would it been if God says, mm, maybe... I had good intentions, <laughs> but I decided, no, I think I'm going to do something else. Thank God we serve a God that does not have good intentions, but he has full of promises. He promised us that he would never leave us, nor would he forsake us. He promised us that he was going to go to that tomb on our behalf. He promised us that he was going to bore every stripe upon his back. That way we did not have to go through that. He promised us that when he would rise from the grave in three days, and then he would conquer death on our behalf. Thank God we have a God that promises those things versus intentions. What a mess we would be in if we had a God that just had nothing but intentions. Hmm. How much more could we be if we would get rid of good intentions and step into the promises of God? Hmm. You see, turn with me over this morning to Matthew chapter 26. I'm not just picking on you today. It's for all of us, amen? Matthew chapter 26, and start at verse 31. And here's Peter's vow of loyalty to Jesus. Verse 31, it says, Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Now see, there's a promise right there that Jesus says. 
I am about to conquer death and give you victory over it. And you shall receive eternal life with me. Amen. Here's Peter's response. Verse 33. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow shall thou deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said the, all the disciples. Father, we thank you for this day again. We thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for the word that you're bringing forth today, God. And so, Lord, this morning I ask that every ear and every heart be open, Lord, that we not only hear it, but, Father, we receive it as well. And, God, once again, I ask you, Lord, to anoint these old clay lips as you continue to hide me behind that cross of Calvary. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And amen. Amen. So here we see Peter. He's all full of spunk. He's all ready to go. He's, he's like, no, I, I don't care what anybody else says or what anybody else does. I will not deny you. I will not deny you. I will fight to the bitter end. I will, I will stand my ground. How many times in our life have we said, God, I will follow you. I'm going to serve you no matter what. And then all, you know, all of a sudden, our intentions is to follow Christ, just as Peter's. Hello. Good intentions. Good intentions. Man, we say, God, I, I, will, I will do it. But yet, God knows our hearts. He knows exactly where we're going to be. That's why he told Peter that he was specific with Peter. He says, before the, the rooster crows three times, you shall deny me. Peter goes, nah, not me. I'm your rock. I'm the, I'm the guy that's going to cut off that guy's ear whenever he comes at you. Hello? And Peter did. Peter stood his ground. But then all of a sudden when Jesus was taken, all of a sudden Peter started to wilt in just a minute because of the fact that whenever he was called out. You see, we're going to be called out in our life some point in time. We're going to be called out to say, hey, uh, whom do you serve? Where do you stand in this? What's going on in your life? Oh, you, you want to talk like you're going to do something other? Well, let's see what you got on your plate. I guarantee the enemy's going to call your bluff. Hello? He's going to call you out. Can I remind us that, remember the little girl, Rachel, from years ago at Columbine, whenever she was hid behind a desk and she just got back with the Lord and all of a sudden this kid comes up to her and he says, hey, if you deny your God, I will let you live. That's the same thing the enemy says to us every day of our life. If you will just not read your word, if you'll stay out of that just a little bit longer, I, I got a loophole for you. If, if you will quit being such a witness for God, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, there's something I can do. He's going to bring the pain, but can I tell you, he may bring the pain, but I have the source that will shall remove the pain. He might bring the rain, but can I tell you, I have a source that brings the sunshine right after it. Hello? I, he may bring the storm, but can I tell you, I have a shelter that I can run to, and his name is Jesus. Hello? And I know without a shadow of a doubt, when I stand and believe in his word and not waver, he shall prosper everything that I do. He shall keep me from harm's way. He shall keep you from harm's way. We have great intentions to be good friends, don't we? But we let one another down. Hello. We're human. We are. We make mistakes. But the enemy fails. He crawls upon those mistakes in our lives. And he makes us feel so unworthy 
to be where we are. But can I tell you, it's not about the intention. It's about the promise. Remember that. It's about the promise that God has made to each and every one of us. His word says, if you shall confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, guess what? <laughs> You're a child of the Most High God. And there is no, warp, no weapon out there shall hurt you. Hmm. We get afraid of life. These storms came through the other night. There was a lot of people that were panicking. And for good reason. A lot of people have houses that don't have shelters in it. You know, maybe they've been affected by these storms before. It happens. But can I tell you, God is our refuge. In whom shall we trust? In whom shall we believe? We know that his promises are real. And even though Peter stood there and he says, wait a minute. No, not me. But then you read on over in there in the scriptures a little bit more. Jesus wanted to go and pray. Guess what? Peter couldn't even stay awake long enough to pray. And he looked at them. He said, can you not even watch me? But then later on, Jesus says, take your rest. Take your rest. But let's look over here. Matthew chapter 26, starting with verse 69. And it says, Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou, hast with, thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, and saying, I know not what you're saying. Can we put this in Rick's term? He sat there and he's like that. That lady looked at him and says, "I know you. You're that guy that travels with Jesus, ain't you?" Peter goes, "He already just seen what happened to Jesus." Hello. He was afraid, and fear struck him. And all of a sudden, she looked at him. She says. You're that guy, aren't you? And he goes, oh, no. Not me. You got me mistaken with somebody else. How many times in our life has the enemy roared up at us and go, hey, you're that guy, aren't you? And we go, um, maybe I don't want to tangle with that. And she not only did it twice, but she got close enough to him to really get a good look. And he's like, you are that guy. And Peter had to justify that he wasn't that guy. The word says that he cursed and jumped, flailed around and, and took off. Hmm. You see, the enemy knows our weaknesses. And that's where he pries at. He pries in our good intentions. We have every great intention of doing the right thing. But how many of us know good intentions just ain't good enough? You can intend to do all these things. I've, I've, I've heard it before. Well, I, I intended to clean my room. Never happened. Two weeks later, you got to get a bulldozer in there and a backhoe and figure everything out. Hello. Oh, I, I have great intentions of reading my word, but it's been two years and you hadn't even looked in the first chapter yet. I find it quite amazing that everybody finds salvation whenever they go to jail, but they lose it as soon as they walk out. Somebody asked me the other day, they says, hey, well, they didn't ask me. They, the guy said, hey, he says, uh, he was telling me, he said, yeah, I, I found Jesus when I came to jail. I said, well, I didn't know he was missing. I didn't know he was lost. Hello. He looked at me like, what do you mean? I said, dude, you were lost. Jesus wasn't. When we're going to recognize that we need to recognize that we are the problem, 
that it's our intentions of doing all these things, but we fail to do them. But thank God we have a God that's not about intention, but he's about promises. Can I tell you today that our God is not only a promise maker, but he's a promise keeper. And see, Peter, he got into that, that, that mode of if, 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 a survival. I'm just going to call it that, a survival mode of him that died. And the word says that he went off back to his boat. But thank God, God does not leave us in our dilemmas. Even though he knows that we fail, even though that we fall short, even though our tensions are there, he still pursues us. Ain't that awesome? That he still loves us enough beyond our faults and our fears that he's willing that we can come in here on Sunday morning and we can cry Hosanna and have a great time. And then when we go out and we get amongst our friends and we start acting like our friends. We get back in our workplaces and we act like our workplace. God is still there though and he's like, wait a minute. He said, I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for you to get rid of the intention and stand on the promise. You see, God did not leave Peter where he was. By all right, he probably should have, just like me in my life. Hello. As much as I failed God, as much as I've turned my back on him, <laughs> hey, hello. He should have never got me out of that 50,000 mud hole that I was in. Hello. But he saw a heart of worship and he knew he had to retrieve it because I was his child just like you are his child he's not going to leave you in your dilemma you can stay in your dilemma but he don't want you to be in that dilemma when Peter ran back to his boat he thought his life was over he thought everything about what happened was done and gone his friend Jesus had been crucified, had been mocked and spit on. The crowd went from singing praises to him to hollering, crying, crucify him. Hmm. Can you imagine that lonely feeling he had sitting in that boat every day after that going, Lord, what did I do? What did I do? My intentions were good. I had no intention of not, of not doing these things. But God has a purpose and a plan, and he always keeps his promise. And his promise is this, that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. He always pursuing you. Even though you can't see it, you don't even know. When Jesus was out there and he showed up on the shore that day, at, when Peter was out there in the boat, he had no idea who Jesus was standing on that shore. Hmm. But when he called out to him, hmm. How many of us know? Oh, come on now. You've been, in, you've been in a place in your life, and then you was dark, and it was lonely, and you thought there was nowhere to go, nowhere to turn, there was nothing going to happen. Then all of a sudden, you hear that small, still voice call out to you, just like he did Elijah in that cave. Hallelujah. And he says, hey, you need to come out of hiding because I have a plan. I have a purpose. Uh, I have redemption for you. I didn't go there. That's not in vain. I have something here I need to give to you once again. A promise of redemption. And whenever Peter came off the boat, and then all of a sudden, I love over there in, in Luke, it talks about, in, in John, it talks about whenever uh, Peter was over there, and he says, do you love me? Can you imagine the heartfelt of Peter at that moment when Jesus looked him in the eye and he says, do you love me? And Peter says, Lord, you know I do. And he says, feed my sheep. 
You see, Peter thought he was done, it was over, and it was nothing else left for him to do. But Jesus found him alone again and brought him back. And he said, I got a plan for you. I got a purpose for you. More importantly, I have a promise for you. The promise is redemption. That's why we can sing that song today, church. I am redeemed. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed because He did it all for us. Even even whenever we don't deserve it, even when we're out there doing our own thing, whenever, even when we're denying him, he still has that promise in place for you and me. And when we come back to the fold, he looks at us and he says, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. It's not a difficult task, church, come on. We complicate it because we think we have to have the right words. We think we have to have the right manner. We think we have to wear the right clothes. We think we have to drive the right car. We think we have to go to one certain church. Hello. All we have to have is the promise of God. The promise that says, if I confess with my mouth and I believe my heart, I am saved. Teach me, O oh God, to turn from my wicked ways, that I may not sin against you, Lord. Help me, O oh God, be a light for you for days to come. And he says, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Church, are we feeding? Or are we just having these good intentions? I'll, I'll, I'll witness to somebody when God lays it on your heart and you see them in that store or in that parking lot, do you walk away from it? Well, I, 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 I'll get it tomorrow. Can I tell you for a lot of people, tomorrow will never come. Can I tell you that as we're sitting here in our comfortable chairs, in our comfortable room, there are people dying all around us. There's not just old people dying. There's not just young people dying. There's all kinds of people that are dying all around this church. And I'm not talking just in the physical form either. They're dying spiritually because no one is willing to say, yes, Lord, let me be that light. Let me share that promise. When you, you walked into that city, God, you walked in with a promise, God. You rode in there with a promise that you said that you were going to the cross, that you were going to die, that you were going to raise again, that we may sit with you in heaven forever and ever. Why are we not fulfilling the promise of God that he gave to us that day? Why are we still sitting here with good intentions of watching people die all around us? Spiritually and physically, but spiritually even more. Look around us. Many of us can remember the times whenever we had great revivals and churches were full and people were singing the praises of God. And now, where are they at? Sitting home, watching TV, doing their own thing, not worried about anybody else. Shame on us for having just good intentions. And not carrying the promise that God has given to us. You know, today is the Palm Sunday. Next week's Easter. I'm sure we'll have lots of people that will show up that will only come on Easter and Christmas. And that's okay. As long as we deliver the promise. 
that's all we got to do. You can ask Brother Danny, you can take a horse and lead him to water, but you can't make him drink. You can give them the promise, but it's up to them to receive that promise. We done our part. God will do the rest. Stand with me this morning.